Good morning everyone. I am Iva de Villa and I'm going to be discussing transcription for today. So for our learning objectives, we have explain the central dogma, explain the main steps of transcription, describe how eukaryotic mRNA is processed, and last is to have an overview about translation. Now, let us begin our discussion with a brief description of these two processes here, the transcription and translation. So these two are the collective processes by which genetic code is read by enzymes in order to produce all of the proteins in an organism. And we all know that proteins are very important because they perform a diverse range of functions for the cell. So they are responsible for the metabolic processes inside the cells and proteins also act as enzymes, they also act as carriers, and they also act as hormones. Now let us proceed to the central dogma. As we can see in the picture, the central dogma states that DNA encodes RNA and RNA encodes protein. So this process is divided into two. So the first one, DNA, which encodes RNA, is the process which we call transcription. So in eukaryotic cells, transcription takes place in the nucleus, while in prokaryotic cells, it takes place in the cytoplasm. And for the other process, which RNA encodes for protein, it is the what we call translation. And translation is taking place in the cytoplasm of both eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. But since we don't have enough time to discuss these two processes, we're going to focus on the first process, which is the transcription. Now let us have the transcription. It is the process by which enzymes use one of the strands of DNA within a gene as a template to produce a messenger RNA or the what we call mRNA. So again, in eukaryotic cells, transcription takes place inside the nucleus. While in prokaryotic cells, since they don't have any membrane-bound organelles, Transcription takes place in the cytoplasm. Now, let us proceed to the three stages of transcription. First, we have initiation, followed by elongation, and last is the termination. Now, let us begin with initiation. If you're going to refer to my learning guide, you will be seeing this figure. So this figure shows the process of initiation. But for us to fully understand the process here, let us synthesize it here. Alright, so for example, we have here a gene. And we all know that a gene is a portion of a DNA, right? So during initiation, there is a specific sequence within the gene which is called promoter. RNA polymerase will bind to the promoter and prise the two strands apart. So one of the strands will serve as the template strand or the antisense strand, meaning it will be used to generate the mRNA and the other strand which is called the non-template strand or the sense strand. Now, during elongation, RNA polymerase doesn't need a primer. It simply initiates mRNA synthesis at start codon and then moves downstream along the gene, synthesizing the mRNA as it goes. Rating the antisense strand from 3' to 5', prime, 
RNA polymerase generates mRNA from the 5' end attaching these nucleotides to the 3' ends as it goes. So as you can see here, the mRNA being synthesized is contradicting the direction of the template strand or the antisense strand. Once RNA polymerase reaches the end of the gene, termination occurs. The enzyme or the RNA polymerase and the mRNA start to detach from the gene. And the DNA is returned to its original state. Now let us have a little pause here. As you can remember, in prokaryotic cells, both transcription and translation occur in the cytoplasm. So again, since this is a prokaryotic cell, the process of transcription is already complete. By the time termination occurs, the transcript or the mRNA would already have been used to partially synthesize numerous copies of the encoded protein. So as you can see here in the figure, the mRNA are attached in multiple ribosomes or polyribosomes, meaning when the mRNA is already attached with ribosomes, it means that it is already undergoing translation. It is already synthesizing proteins. So here, if you're going to compare prokaryotic cell to eukaryotic cells, prokaryotic cells have shorter span in making proteins. On the other hand, in eukaryotic cells, since transcription occurs in the nucleus, it will also undergo different process. Now let us go back to the mRNA that has been synthesized earlier. If we take a closer look to this mRNA, we can see that this mRNA is consisting sequences which are called introns and exons. So introns, they are the intervening sequences, meaning they do not code for proteins. And then on the other hand, exons are the protein coding sequences. And again, our major objective here is to produce proteins for our cell. So it means we don't need introns. With that, this mRNA will undergo RNA processing or splicing. So during RNA processing and or splicing, introns will be detached from the mRNA with the help of various splicing enzymes. And exons will be left in the transcript. And as you can remember, this mRNA will be transported from the nucleus to cytoplasm. During transportation, this mRNA will be exposed to degradation. That's why it needs protection. So special nucleotide will be added to the 5' cup end of this mRNA. And on the other hand, during elongation, poly A tail is being added to the 3' end of this mRNA. And there you go. You already have your mRNA which is ready for transportation from the nucleus to the cytoplasm for the process of translation. Now going back to the central dogma, again we already have our RNA as a result from transcription and now this RNA is ready to synthesize protein in the process of translation. And that would be all. Thank you for listening.